All right, folks, welcome on into another edition of the High School Huddle, your one-stop shop for everything and all things Section 5 Sports. I'm AJ Fellman. He is Carl Jones. We have almost reached the end of the tunnel. Spring sports has one week left in it. We are on to the state semifinals, the finals, but things are getting a little wonky with the schedule. We thought we were done with the schedule craziness. You know, COVID, um, for most intents and purposes, is, is a thing of the past. So no more cancellations, no more postponements. We're, we're spring sports, but we haven't really gotten a ton of weather lately. So we've been good for the most part, except for now we're getting smoke delays, Carl. Yeah, that was a little a little interesting. Woke up yesterday and uh, tried to go on my daily run, and it was like, why is it looking like a movie out here, man? It's looking kind of like, kind of weird. The smell was kind of off, and I had, honestly had no idea. I wasn't. I was kind of unplugged from the world, trying to figure out why in the world this was a thing. <laughs> and now that I'm caught up as to why it's, why the the smoke has traveled across the eastern part of the United States, it's nuts. And the fact that it's obviously impacting not just sports, but just a lot of just like walks of life, pets, animals. This is insane. I, I Like, obviously, the West Coast deals with some variety degree of this every single year. I've never seen anything like this. So this is all new to me. I had no idea how to uh, maneuver it. Thank God I got a couple of friends who live on the West Coast. So they was telling me the do's and don'ts. But nonetheless, this is wonky. I have never seen nothing like it. Yeah, it is not good right now, as most people who are listening to this podcast know. But you see the... You see the the tweets and the TikToks from New York City, man. It is at a different level down there. It is straight out of. I, I tweeted it out a little, um, making a little joke. It's like uh, in Breaking Bad when they go down to Mexico and uh, the color filter. Basically, apparently in Mexico in the Breaking Bad world, um, it's orange, which is basically what it is right now in New York City. Like it is crazy. But uh, but as we alluded to, it is causing some scheduling ripples in uh, the state tournament so far. Most notably in boys lacrosse, because the state semifinals were supposed to be on Wednesday, which is when we are reporting this podcast today. They moved that from Wednesday to Thursday. And just about 20 minutes ago, before we started recording this Wednesday afternoon, evening, those got pushed to Friday. Still at their, mostly their original locations, the, the exact locations in Cortland changed. But now those games are going to be played Friday afternoon, morning, for the boys, it's all in the afternoon. Those are going to be played Friday in the Cortland area. And that's pushing those championship games for boys lacrosse, which were going to be on Saturday down on Long Island. Those are going to be now on Sunday. So that's the big change here in the state semifinals and the finals. Locally in Section 5, there were supposed to be flag football um, state or sectional championships and, and semifinals this week on Thursday and Friday. I believe those are now on Thursday for the most part. I'll see if I can get something final at the end of the show for you guys. Um, I think, or who knows, by the time this is re recorded, it could be changed again. So that's getting moved. We're having some all-star games getting moved. So lots of things getting moved around. But eventually, knock on wood, we will be playing these games and we've got a lot of local teams going into the state semifinals, especially in lacrosse, where it was a clean sweep against all of our Buffalo teams, as we kind of predicted. But we will start with a little recap and uh, preview on the boys lacrosse side, where Carl was manning down the fort here uh, at St. John Fisher past, this past Saturday. Yeah, boys did they th – well, lacrosse did they thing this weekend, man. It was uh... – you you if you didn't catch the first quarter for some of these games, <laughs> ah, it was over with. We'll start in Class A, Pittsburgh up against Lancaster. I believe they started that game on a thirteen zero run through the third quarter. They ended up winning that game thirteen to four. I think it was seven zero after the first quarter. This Pittsburgh um, do what championship style teams do. They don't play with their food. They get right to it. Jackson Green, Ian Erskine, and Luke Fliss all had three goals. It was just impressive to see. Obviously, you knew that you know. Lancaster may have may probably weren't on their um, level. Having said that, Pittsburgh they didn't play down to that at all. They knew what the, the circumstances were, and they took it right to them. So shout out to them for um, taking care of business last Saturday. They're up against Baldwinsville out of the Syracuse area. I, I believe all of these games are going to be versus the Syracuse area teams. Um, for a little comparison of who Baldwinsville is, they're seventeen and two. They actually beat Victor in the regular season seven to six, and then also faced Thomas. And beat them 12 to 3. So this is a really, really darn good Baldwinsville team as well. Pittsburgh's clicking at the right time ever since I believe that Victor lost. They haven't um failed since then. So they're they're clicking, but they're going up against a Beville team. 
who's who's good as well. Should be a fun one. I mean, Pittsburgh looked really darn good last week, but quite frankly, I hope they did considering the um the matchup last weekend. Yeah, Baldwinsville, a very strong team. Like you mentioned, they took down Victor. They also took down Fairport this season. They are the number one ranked team in New York State among the teams in the New York State Public High School Athletic Association. They are number three in the state overall. So the state sports writers are pinning Baldwinsville as the favorite. Pittsburgh, uh, sixth overall. They are third in uh, NISFA teams. So that should be a good one. If Pittsburgh can get by this really good Baldwinsville team, you know, the, the, the that's going to be a really big boost to them going into Sunday. And, and who knows, maybe that makes them the title favorites going forward. If that game's played Sunday, I don't even know when yeah. the game's going to be played. <laughs> Honestly, uh, on the Class B, Victor took care of business against Orchard Park, which is the kind of theme of this across uh, segment. 17-2, to two, Jack Heron Dean with five goals. Another game where Victor, was the game was never in doubt. They uh, came out the gates really, really fast. Um, 17 and 2, like I said. They're up against the West Genesee team, who the record isn't the most impressive, but they obviously got hot down the stretch to get to this point. They lost to Pittsburgh in the regular season 7 to 6, took a, also a loss to Fairport 9 to 7. And then this Jamesville DeWitt team, who's going to be in Class C, who HFL played against, is really darn good, and they lost to them by 10 goals. So it gives you like a little bit of a. Um, a look or a comparison of just where this West Jenny team is in the Syracuse region. That game will be as we hope planned right now, 5 p.m. on Friday for the Blue Devils. Another chance to kind of prove themselves and uh, who they are in the state. Yeah, Victor, number one in class B in the rankings. West Genesee, you got to look down a little bit. You got to look past a lot of Long Island teams to get to them. They are number 13 in the state. So, Kind of an, an unmatched or a, a little bit of a mismatch if you're looking by the state rankings. Victor, the heavy favorites in this one. Victor trying to get back to the promised land, get back to that state championship game and and win it all as they've done, uh, I believe, a few times here. And then into Class C, HFL up against Jamesville DeWitt, like I alluded to earlier. Both teams are 15-4. and four. To get here, HFL beat Lakeshore. They were actually down 43 at the half. I believe that's when I left was hoping that I got enough goals from that game, but I had to rip and run, as AJ told you. Um, we had to do a lot on Saturday. But they stormed back in the second half, I believe, on the 8-2 run in the second half to get things done. Grady Guberle and then uh, – Guberle, excuse me, and then Chase Perriman both with a hat trick. Um, so an impressive win. Obviously, they didn't dominate like their A and B of, uh, opponents, but nonetheless, a win is a win, and they advanced to the state Final Four. They're up against the JD team. Like I said, 15 and four. They lost to Victor 16 to 11. Not that bad of a score, to be honest. Putting up 11 goals on Victor is nothing to sneeze at. So this is a JD team who's who's pretty darn tough, and HFL is going to have to bring it. Yeah, Jamesville DeWitt ranks six in the state. HFL a little bit further down at 11. So like you mentioned, a Jamesville DeWitt team that can hang with Victor, that's a, that's a pretty – that's a good SEC loss. That's a quality <laughs> loss there, Carl. Yeah, you're right. A good a, a good SEC loss. You know what? You lose to the top notch SEC teams by like seven, ten points. It ain't that bad on the resume. I think that's a, a good quality loss, as they as like to call it. And then wrapping up the boys, uh lacrosse side, Penyan up against Marcellus. Penyan to get here, beat East Aurora eight to four in the far west regionals. Their game was tied at two and a half, and then they kind of pulled away in the second half behind a four one uh third quarter. This game is gonna be a rematch of the first game of the season. Or Penyan, they lost ten to three, but once again that game I believe was the first like like early early April. Obviously these two teams are totally different. You imagine two months apart. Um, I mean those you, those early games are like I don't want to call them scrimmages, but like you don't get a lot of reps before those first games. So like that's the kind of like the mindset. These are two totally different teams at this point. Um, that game was also five to two heading into the fourth, so it wasn't like it was some blowout in that. Uh, the entire way. Uh, Marcellus is a really darn good team, though, at 17-3. and three. That game, as we know right now, recording this on Wednesday, is at 3 p.m. in the Cortland area on Friday. Yeah, Penyan, obviously, as we talk about them, as the class of Class D, whether it's, you know, you know, 24 out of 25 straight chances, winning all the way since, you know, the early decade, just the big run they've gone on. But Penyan really hasn't taken that success into the state level they've only gotten one state championship uh in their career as i quickly looked this up i believe it was 2004 so penyan's trying to you know push on a little bit further than they have in the past 
they do have a lot of young talent, but they've got some, you know, guys who have been here before. 2001 was their last state championship, their only state championship. Uh, Penyan currently ranked sixth in the state, and then Marcellus at third. So you've got two really good teams facing off against each other. In the other semifinal, you do have uh, Pleasantville and Cold Spring Harbor. Those are the one and two ranked team in the states. So whoever wins this game, this Penyan game, trying to show that they weren't uh, playing the third place game a little bit early there. Yeah, it was a fun weekend, though, there at, at Fisher. Um, once again, I didn't really catch the good parts of the games, which was literally just the second half of the C and D games. But nonetheless, it was just kind of cool to see um, championship level teams doing what they're supposed to do. And that's dominate from start to finish. Yeah, and I do want to correct myself uh, real quick. I said that uh baldwinsville beat fairport in this season it was canadaqua so just wanted to correct that for myself so all those pittsford boys lacrosse fans out there aren't confused going into the week uh girls lacrosse side it was kind of the same story i was out there in buffalo could not get to any of these games because the baseball games were going super long they were low scoring the stupid wind was was uh we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later but i was not able to get to any of the girls lacrosse games however it was the same story on the boys' side. Clean sweep across the board. Even more dominance um, from the girls' lacrosse side. At least, like you mentioned, in C&D, the, the Buffalo teams put up a little bit of a fight. Uh, Rochester really let them know who uh, Big Sis was on Saturday. Starting Class A, Fairport took down Lancaster 18-8. to It was Michaela Keys and Lily Condes getting it done. Six points for Keys. Condes with four goals. Fairport's going to take on Suffern in the semifinals. That is Friday at 3. Suffern, 13-6 and six on the season. They have two runner-up uh, appearances on their resume in 2015 and 2000. Uh, a couple of their, their star players, Michaela Fay, a freshman with five goals and two assists in their regional win. And then they got a really good goalie, too. Jillian Terlizzi with 10 saves in their sectional win. She had two of them late um, against one of uh, their opponent's top scorers to, to secure the victory there. So Fairport seeking their first sectional championship game appearance in school history. Fairport, obviously a team that won the right games down the stretch. They beat uh, RH in that really close overtime game winner. So Fairport got to be feeling good heading into this, uh, this state semifinal here. Yeah, I think the RH win just like put the morale like at a, at a whole new level. Obviously, they were good all year long. I believe they only had two losses heading into the sectional final. But when you take down a really darn good RH team, parlay that and taking care of business in the Far West Regionals, I don't think they are going to be all too intimidated on who they play in the state final four, considering the path they took to get here. In Class B, you've got the defending state champs, the Victor Blue Devils. Um, they got here by taking down Clarence 16-2, to Julia Brongo and Bryn Gotham, two of the many... Full scorers who got it done for them. They both had three goals apiece. They're going to take on Bethlehem in the state semifinals. Bethlehem, the runners-up in 2005. Doing a little research on them. A very diverse attack for them. A lot of players scoring a lot of goals. Leading the way, Maeve Conway with 56 goals on the year. And Carolyn Moroda with 51 goals on the season. This is a Victor team that obviously we talked about all season long. You know, losing to Rush Henrietta, suffering a couple of Section 5 losses along the way, then really found their game late in the season. Took down Canadagua convincingly in the regular season. Fought back against that Aronicoi team in that quadruple overtime game. And not a lot of their team has that state championship game experience, but there's still a, a, a very good handful from that team back. Levin, Devin Livingston, of course. Um, leading the way uh, offensively there. So, Victor, they won their first state championship last year, trying to go back-to-back -back for the Blue Devils. Yeah, you mentioned they don't have, like, all the state championship experience back from last year's team, but they do have Devin Livingston, who is a really darn good player and it showed in that sectional final game comeback against Aronicoit. And to go back on your point a little bit about their section five losses, looking at the resume now, I mean, okay, you lost to Fairport, RH, and then Pittsburgh as well. It wasn't like they were losing to like middling teams and we we're like, oh, it's like, did they lose too much off of last year's team to compete this year? Knowing what we know now, okay, they lost to the big dogs in Class A and then a Pittsburgh team who's nothing to slouch at it at all either. And they were young. So it all makes sense. Not all too shocked that Victor made it back to the, to the spot where we assumed that they could get it as long as they put everything together. 
Yeah, and all of their uh, their their losses this season, a one goal loss to CNS, a one goal loss to Rush Henrietta, a one goal loss to Pittsburgh, and you guessed it, a one goal loss to Fairport. So eventually you turn those into wins, you're feeling a lot better heading into state semifinals. Going down to Class C, we got HFL uh, making their 10th straight appearance in these state semifinals. Seeking their elusive state championship, they are runners-up six times previously, most recently last year. They're going to have a really tough test in John Jay. They, they got here by taking down Lakeshore 22-9. Claire Ruff with seven goals for HFL taking down Lakeshore. John Jay is a really good team. They were the runners-up in 2019. They're 18-2 on the season, and they are the only team that um, in uh, certainly in, in these – Four matchups here that we're going to face off against a uh, an honorably mentioned ranked opponent in the national top 25. So John Jay getting national recognition uh, from the Nike rankings, honorable mention in the top 25. HFL has been this in this position before. So far, their calling card is, you know, they roll through the regionals. They, they face these teams from Long Island. They run some trouble trying to change the script for the Cougars this season. Man, we were just talking about experience how Victor – the top ladies have it, but not necessarily maybe the rest of the roster. They've all been here before. Like, they've all been at this Final Four uh, range, like you said, 10 years in a row. Man, that's that's nothing to sneeze at. I know, like, they dominate in whatever class they in and then dominate the Far West Regionals. But, dang, regardless of what happens this weekend, that's nothing to sneeze at. But, man, um, going up against a nationally, uh, I don't want to say ranked foe, but a team who is getting a lot of love on a national stage, it's gonna, they're going to have their hands full, but – Aquinas took down Palmac, I believe, in a sectional final as well. Once again, beating some quality teams, not necessarily at that level that they're going to play this weekend, but getting the mojo right, heading into what will be their toughest test this season. Yeah, there are some other teams ranked, nationally ranked, uh, left in the bracket, but of the four teams that are being played, you know, the section five versus other teams, um, the only ones left. Victor, however, is ranked uh, number 20 in the country, so I want to give, uh, make sure we do not, um, disacknowledge the Blue Devils on uh, their success so far this season. And then finally, we go down to Class D. Penyan took down Eden, the mighty, mighty Eden Raiders, 17-3. to Couldn't quite uh, hack it with the Mustangs. Six goals and two assists for Bailey Cooper on that game. They're going to face a really good team in Bronxville once again. They are the defending state champs in Class D. And then we had no COVID season in, or no states in 2021. Obviously nothing in 2020. And then Bronxville was state runners up in 2019, 2018, 2017. So in their last four seasons of, of state tournament play, their worst finish is second place. So you've got that going for them. Uh, three, at least three, at least um, based on the one website I found. Three Division One commits for a Class D team. Anna Becker going to Columbia. Catherine Berkery going to Penn. And Olivia Shinsato going to Georgetown. And those are some schools where you're like, all right, you know, this isn't, you know, these ain't scrub D1 schools. So, so penny has got their hands full against this, this Bronxville team. Good, good luck. You know, a, a young team here for the first time, you, you might, you might be humbled a little bit. We'll, we'll see, you know, it's on paper, but, but this Bronxville team seems pretty good. Yeah, that's some impressive. That's an impressive resume right there. I know that's a team sport and all that, but all sometimes you need is just a couple studs to <laughs> to, to get you that far. You name three quality schools, man. Hey, yeah. hey, y'all gonna have to just ignore the paper and go out there and ball. That's that ain't nothing to sneeze at. I tell you that. You, you you might get a little. Don't get starstruck. Ignore the, the recruiting rankings and all the good college stuff and go out there and say, hey, they lace them up just like we do. That'll be a. I'll have my eye on that one to see if the uh, the Mustangs can pull that one off. Yeah, so that Penyan game is going to be at uh, doo -doo -doo, 11 o'clock in the morning at uh, Cortland High School. HFL, don't know if I mentioned it, is at 3 o'clock on Friday. So all of these lacrosse games are going to be played on Friday. Knock on wood, fingers, fingers crossed. The girls' championships are going to be on Saturday, like normal, we think. And then the boys are going to be on Sunday. So that's what we've got on the lacrosse side of things. We're going to switch over to the Diamond where some mixed results, certainly not as successful as the lacrosse, but we still had plenty of teams uh, showing up on the softball and the baseball diamonds. Carl was over at Trader for, for most of the day, a lot of the day. He'll have our little softball report here. Yeah, starting in class AA, 
Rush Henrietta's season came to an end at the hands of Clarence, 12 to 6. Um, Clarence took a 7 0 lead in the third inning, and RH could never quite um, close the distance on that. Successful season still for the for the Royal Comets, first sectional title the week prior, and in thrilling fashion, I believe in nine innings against Victor, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Um, yep. RH didn't fold. I mean, they scored, uh, I believe, all of their runs, in the, uh, most of their runs, excuse me in the uh, final two innings, so it wasn't like they just laid down and didn't want to compete. The ladies competed. They just ran into a foe who just pitched better and hit better, hit better that day for um, for all intents and purposes. Um, there's nothing to sneeze at at all with, with how their season transpired. Now, their first state or a sectional championship in school history, so going to be in the rafters forever. You got that that brick forever. Now they can take that away from them. Uh, and like you mentioned, put up a, a pretty good fight there at the end uh, in the regional game. And then in Class A, Thomas gets it done. I am so upset at how this transpired. <laughs> ladies, we need to have a talk. This is a PSA announcement to all the Lady Titans right now. If you see me in the outfield, I'm not going to be there the whole game. So when I'm there, please show up and show out. Um, preface this by saying, they, look, shout out to the ladies for going to the Final Four for the first time in school history. However, the reason why I'm a little irked, I was on a time crunch, so I was only going to be there in like two, three innings max. Just based off, I had to get back to the station to anchor the 6 p.m. Well, the first two innings, none really happened. A couple um, ladies got on base for both teams, but nothing obviously to show um, no one crossed the plate for a run. Then as I'm walking out, um, Will, Will East gets the bases loaded and a runner comes home. Like, oh, Lord, have mercy. Like, whatever. Like, I hope they lose. Like, whatever. And then I get back to the station after, you know, after I do my six, someone tweeted a grand slam in the third inning. Like, what? like y'all couldn't do this in the second inning? Like, like whatever, I digress. I'm not as angry. Maddie Hicks was the one that hit the uh, the home, uh, the grand slam in the third inning. Emma Bello with the RBI double in that inning as well. And then Julia Maciak. All the runs came in that third inning. So how about <laughs> we just push that up one? And y'all all would have been on TV. That probably would have led the show. Grand Salami. Another bellow on the team, man. That would have been great. But nonetheless, they're going up against Troy um, in the state final four. First time in school history they've ever been to this point. So um, shout out to them. Little common opponent thing right here. Thomas beat Jamesville DeWitt four to three. Troy also beat JD nine to zero. So both teams taking care of business over a Syracuse foe. That game will be, we presume, 10 a.m. on Friday. Troy is 21 and four out of the section two area here in New York State. Yeah, I saw, you know, seeing from uh, Markel over at uh, the DNC, I saw him tweet like, ah, uh, or maybe it's picking splinters, grand slam in the third inning. And, you know, we, we communicate as we go. Carl was saying, all right, I was here for the, the first two innings, got nothing. I think I'm going to head back. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, if, if, if you think, if you got to head back, head back, you know, do the best you can. And I was hoping that he, that like all this stuff happened, you know, as he was walking out, maybe he could run back, whatever, yada, yada, this. But hey, that's the life of a, a local sports reporter. You can only be in so many places at the same time, especially when Ed Oliver signs a contract extension at basically the same time. So it did not help the cause for Carl. No, I, the Ed Oliver thing actually made things worse because I actually had to spend, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Hey, what's Ed's contract? Where is Ed's video? Like, it, so Ed, you didn't want to sign on Sunday? Why Saturday? <laughs> like, what? Do you, I'm just over here complaining. Y'all don't care about that part. But nonetheless, shout out to the Lady Titans for another impressive when once again taking on Troy on Friday. Yeah, saw the uh, the the parade through through the hallways today. They're on their way down to uh to Long Island trying to win their first ever sec or a state championship. And then in class B did not get this get to watch this one at all, but Wellsville beat Iroquois 15 to 5. They'll face Marlboro out of the section nine area 4 p.m. once again on Friday as well. Yeah, and then I, I do because I just put this in section five best. So I oh, you know what? I accidentally accidentally printed out McKenna Dunbar, two home runs for Wellsville to get it done for the Lions. So uh McKenna Dunbar, once again, all the home runs happened when Carl was not there. Luckily, we are not uh well, I guess luckily for so, for for them trying to hit home runs. Unfortunate for us, we cannot send somebody down to Long Island for softball. So that means a lot of home runs, a lot of wins for section five teams, Carl. Yeah, and it's funny. That was a game that actually is – you know what? We, let's blame the Wellsville ladies. Since they played <laughs> so well, that was actually the reason why like, – like, they dominated, what, 15-5. to five. That was the reason why I couldn't get the Thomas highlights because the game didn't start until, like, 445. Like, 
pushed the game back a whole 45 minutes. Like, y'all couldn't beat them like 8-5 to five or 8-1 or something. But no, y'all How about one nothing? one But no, they want to run it up and embarrass their opponents. What's their sportsmanship at? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Nonetheless, Wellsville, two home runs, nothing to sneeze at. I hope y'all bring home a state championship as well this weekend. And then I was over at the Baseball Diamonds this weekend on Saturday. I was able to stay for all of these innings and was not rewarded with much highlights because – for, due to weather and good opponents and good pitching and things like that section five in the top three classes did not have too much of a successful outing on saturday we'll start off in class double a fairport fell to lancaster in 11 innings just a single run scored as i kind of jinxed it as i got to the game i had to go to the from the other softball game from or baseball game from batavia all the way to grand island because some long travel. Apparently, they're not going to put those in the same spot. I've actually, that Batavia game was a home game for Section 5. So it did help that they put it somewhat close to Buffalo. But I got there in like the fifth inning and it was scoreless. And I texted Carl. I'm like, made here in time, scoreless, fifth inning, ready to roll. And then I ended up seeing a full seven innings of scoreless baseball after that. So I was in it for the long haul either way. Sam Miller on the mound for Fairport did all he could, pitched eight scoreless innings. He was dueled uh, against by Jack Harrington of Lancaster. Both of them went really, uh, really strong in this game. Relief pitchers still did well. Um, but with two outs in the bottom of the 11th inning, Connor Hawk, high fly ball to right. As I mentioned before, the wind was just terrible all day long. Blowing in, blowing to the right as the batters were hitting it. Just just wreaked havoc on the game. You know, these games were really low scoring. If we switch that baseball diamond around, we're getting like 15 to 12 games. Uh, so I have beef with the person who designed that complex out there in Grand Island. But ball went out to the right fielder. Just moved a little bit too much in the wind. Couldn't catch it. That's your ball game. Uh, the other game that was out there in Grand Island was in Class B. Palmac fell 4-1. to one. No crazy viral play for the Red Raiders. Um, it did have a good, excuse me, uh, pitching performance by Ian Goodness. Had 12 strikeouts on the day. Eight of his first nine outs came via the strikeout. So he was doing all he could. Good way to allow your fielders to, fielders a break, get all your runs via the strikeout. He did all he could. However, the Palmac bats could really not get going. They only had one run that came on the base pass. They went and stole, stole second. They played around there. Then he came home. So, uh, But Depew got four runs in that one. Uh, it was a three-run fourth inning that did it for the Wildcats. So Palmac and Fairport, just one combined run in a very windy day out in Grand Island. Yeah, getting the updates on the Fairport game was hilarious considering <laughs> – like, I'm getting them for you, and then, like, I'm scrolling on Twitter doing my thing. I'm like, man, like, you telling me we extra, extra, extra innings, and we still ain't got, like, no one, like, you know, nothing like that was crazy. And then just want to give a shout-out to Goodness as well. Um, fantastic career. I, I know him on the basketball court as well, did his thing. I believe his brother the year before as well. Um, fantastic athletes from what I've seen here uh, in our two years here in Rochester. Um, nothing to hold his head out, head down about as well as the rest of the Red Raiders team. For the fantastic year they had. I believe they have a sister too. Um, I forget what sport, but she doing her thing as well. So we're not done with the goodness yet. Well, with the goodness family yet, AJ. We're not done with them. I think it might be Taryn, I believe, is that yeah, Taryn Goodness still coming up the ranks. And uh we've heard some rumblings that she is the best athlete of them all. So uh still good things coming out of the goodness household. Uh, no pun intended, literally. And then in class A, it was another tough day for section five. HFL falling 13 to nothing to Williamsville East. Um, Cougars only could muster up one hit, gave up 10 runs in the third inning. Tough loss to Williamsville East. A really good Williamsville East squad, as uh, our good friend Tom Prince warned us about uh, on, the, on the show prior. Tough season for HFL, but a, a great season for HFL nonetheless. They've still got their two lacrosse seasons going. HFL actually the only team in Section 5 history to win lacrosse championships in boys lacrosse, girls lacrosse, softball. And baseball, only team to win sectional titles in all four things. So a lot to be proud about for HFL this year. Nothing to sneeze at at all. That's an impressive performance. Man, the school morale must be, like, up, <laughs> up right now. Like, Lord have mercy. Like, usually, you know, it's the one team you can rally around. Like, oh, this, 
all the fans getting like, all right, let's just follow this team for the for the season. No, y'all got to show love to the other three sports too. So um, once again, like you said, shout out to the Cougars for the fantastic uh, spring season. We do have two teams in Class C and D advancing on to the state semifinals, proving once again that if we don't talk about you, you're going to do really good. Last week, we only got to preview the top three teams. Well, the bottom two uh, in class size has moved on. We'll start uh, talking about some Class C. Batavia Notre Dame took down Gowanda 6-5 to five in the regionals. Hayden Groff, 2-3 for three at the plate with a sack fly to go ahead in the seventh. He had three RBIs on the day. Um, Bryston Berry getting it done on the mound. Five innings pitch, six Ks, also scored a run um, offensively. They're going to be taking down a really good Chatham, taking on a really good Chatham team in the state semifinals. In their last five games, they have only allowed seven runs. They've got some heavy hitters. They've got Matthew Thorson with 12 home runs on the season, 31 for his career. That's a section two record. He is going off to Northeastern. And then they got, he's a really good pitcher. And they also got another one, Tyler Neller. Um, he can touch 89 with his fastball. I saw uh, on the recruiting sites. Chatham 22 and two on the season. So Batavia Notre Dame has their work cut out for them against a really good squad. Um, in class D it is North star. They made it here to the state semifinals with a three to one victory over North Collins, their first state semifinal appearance since 2004, where they did go on to win the state championship uh, in that game. Don Kermis, Four and a third innings on the mound. One run allowed for the Class D2 Player of the Year. Parker Seeley, the standout at the plate. Two for three with an RBI. That was a go-ahead single. They're going to take on a Parishville Hopkinton team who is 16-1 and one on the season. Um, some close games in their regional and sectional victory. John Snell with a complete game performance in the state regional round. So, North Star Christian, Batavia Notre Dame, both moving on to the state semifinals. Those games are going to be played in Binghamton. Both teams playing at 2 o'clock with their championship games on Saturday. You said 13 home runs in a, in a spring season. That's a little uh, – that, that's wild. That's like two months of, like, home – Lord have mercy, yeah. That's a D1 player I've ever heard of. I, I don't know nothing about, like, Division One recruiting, but – I feel like those numbers are kind of like what it takes a little bit sometimes. I don't know. Shout out to uh, whoever uh, that team is. I believe but Batavia Notre Dame is up against that player. And uh, good luck. Yeah. Plus, you talk about a Class C school. To get 12 run, or twelve home runs in a season, A, uh, you got to be so good that the few pitches they throw at you, you got to be hitting out. Because you're not getting a ton of at-bats with quality looks. And then B... Your other teammates got to be good enough where they can't just send you to first every single time. So uh, good luck to Batavia Notre Dame with that one, two punch. Once again, those semifinal games will be on Friday championship games on Saturday, but we are in for a treat this weekend with all the stuff getting pushed on. We have 11 section five teams playing. Uh, excuse me. No, actually I did my math wrong. We've got uh, eight, 10. We've got 13 Section 5 teams playing in the state semifinals on Friday. We, we, we could do like a round ball roundup type show <laughs> Friday night. We will see how many teams win, move on. We're going to have all these highlights and reactions and, and things of that nature. We're going to be going out to Cortland slash Binghamton, mostly just Cortland on Friday, and then we'll see what's left on Saturday. But we, we've got our work cut out for, uh, for ourselves, Carl. Yeah, we do, but I know these athletes, they've been balling out all year. They've done their thing. I know they're going to get to the biggest stage of the season and do their thing as well. They've worked all year to get to this point. Parents have supported. School administrators have supported them as well. It's time to shine, and they're going to do so. I believe so. And we got flag football coming up soon. So we got we got the whole range of uh, sports on our spectrum. However, it is now time to break the huddle. We thank you for listening on Spotify on Apple Podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube and RochesterFirst.com. This is our penultimate show of the season. We will have one more show next week to rack up this, wrap up the spring sports season, talk about everything that happened in the last week, maybe give out some awards, all that jazz. But we'll have one more show for you next week. Until then, for Carl Jones, I am AJ Fellman. We will see you next time. Good luck to all of our Section 5 teams in the state tournament.